And we continue our series, discovering values from Joseph's story or from Joseph's life. Today we have part five. And today is a big key word, remembering. Remembering. It is about our memory. God strongly relies on our memory. In our memory we have connection with the Lord. In our memory we, <laughs> we remember in our memory that he always has been faithful like Major Bob testified today. And he wants for us to be connected in our memory with him because present time and future time sometimes comes to us and challenges us. And if we have short memory we keep forgetting that he has been faithful in the past and we get nervous, we lost our trust or we partially lost our trust and we make many mistakes. So God wants for us to be strongly connected with him in memory. And some quotes on remembering. It is hard to forget someone who gave you, gave you so much to remember. <laughs> Next one. Stop remembering what God has forgotten. Sometimes we do remember what God has forgotten. And He forgets and He forgives and He releases us in order for us to be free and to be renewed. Amen? So do not hold someone who has offended you or wounded you. Just release him. Forget. Amen? Friendship consists in forgetting what one gives and remembering what one receives. Remembering with thanks is what causes us to trust, to really believe. And last one, discipline is remembering what you want. And when in our service to God, God also wants for us to be faithful. If we promise something, we have to remember what we've promised. Actually, my advice to you would be do not be too fast to promise because God remembers what we've promised. So we have to be slow in promising, but if we do promise, we have to follow. I tell, it, first of all, it to myself and to you, secondly. Just basically to remind us that our story is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 40, verses from 1 through 22. Remember, remember, said Joseph in this story, me, when it is well with you. How often we do forget when it is, it is well with my soul and my memory gets shorter and shorter. So God wants for us to be faithful in our memory when it is well with us too. Our first part is Genesis chapter 40 verses 1 through 7. We each have had a dream and the reality is we do have a dream. Who has had a dream this night? Sometimes dreams are so colorful, so interesting that I personally do not want to be <laughs> waked up. But sometimes those dreams, they disturb me, right? And, you know, problem is you wake up and you forgot already what you've seen. Or some dreams, actually, Jesus once came to me in my dream and I, I think I broke some rules. Uh, I, I've played on stock market. And I wanted to raise funds for shelter for seniors. And problem was that I, I got connection with a person who hasn't been faithful in his work, who hasn't been honest. And I was just a new believer. I just came to Christ probably a couple of months before. And I didn't know about that. And Jesus came to me and he, I remember he pointed at me and he made like this. And I've been shocked. Why? Why? And I've been chained to the bed, to the back of the bed, and he entered the room and I knew that it was him. And suddenly my friends who were around the bed, they disappeared. And he entered, and he didn't talk with me, he just made like this. And I've been terrified and I didn't know why. Next morning all stock markets holds fell down and I lost completely all what I had. <laughs> And I still remember in colors, in details, what I've seen in that dream. So when God brings something to you, wants to tell you something through the dream, you will keep remember that in details. And in our story, it came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their lord, the king of Egypt. So what things? We remember that Joseph has been placed in a prison, and that was special prison, that was Pharaoh's prison, which is a terrible fact in itself, because only by personal order of Pharaoh, Joseph could be released. Actually, it was almost a life sentence. But we see in this story that butler and a baker of the king of Egypt, they've been, uh, they offended the Lord. 
to be close to Pharaoh, to be close to the big people of this world means to be a danger, right? Because we're, we're becoming vulnerable and we really depend on their mood or on, on their way of thinking. And if we somehow offend them or interrupt the lines, we could be punished, like in this case. And we understand that Butler and Baker, they've had very close connection with Pharaoh. Pharaoh actually uh, depended on their loyalty, on their honesty, and his life really was connected with their service. And in verse 2 we see that Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in custody, they've been arrested, in the house of the captain of the guard. And we remember that that was Potiphar, in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And we remember that the head of the prison, he relied on Joseph completely and again Joseph basically ruled over this prison. He managed the prison as he previously managed the house of Potiphar. So Joseph was a very reliable person. It is a great lesson. Even when we are in a house of slavery, people still rely on us and God is able to use us even when we are enslaved. It's not necessarily should be house of a big uh, maher, big man who controls us. It could be even inside of us some kind of control. We, we shouldn't forget that God is all powerful and he can use us even in the midst of any slavery. Verse 4, and the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them. So they were in custody for a while. Can you please notice that even Joseph has been in charge? but he served them. He didn't lord over them. Jesus once said that kings among the nations, they lord over their people, but he said it shouldn't be like that among you. Who among you wants to be the biggest should become a least, should be a servant to everyone. So Joseph had beautiful example and his character is a beautiful example of becoming a servant even to those who were under him. They were in custody for a while. Verse 5, Then the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt who were confined in the prison had a dream. Please note, all the time text tells to us, confined in the prison, confined in the prison. So basically they've been limited in their activities, they've been limited in their freedom, they've been incarcerated. But God is able to penetrate any bars, any walls and enter inner world of any person and to bring his dream or vision. And still today scientists struggle with understanding of the area of dreams. Even science is so advanced but they still have problems with understanding about dreams area. God still keeps that for himself. They both had a dream, each man's dream in one night and each man's dream with its own interpretation. We see word interpretation here. It's not enough just to have a dream. It is also should be giving interpretation. Sometimes God gives interpretation to you or to me when he wants to for us to get a lesson. As I've got a lesson by the circumstances next morning. When I've seen a dream, I didn't have a clue. I've just been scared, terrified. But next morning, I realized what God wanted to tell me. And in our circle, even here, there are people who have this gift. It's been given to us, actually explained to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, where Paul mentioned about two gifts which were given by the same Spirit of the Holy One. First gift is called gift of wisdom, and second gift is a word of knowledge. A word of wisdom and word of knowledge. Those two gifts, they help us to understand. But we have to practice it. Problem with us, we have treasures in our boxes here and here, but we do not practice it. And basically those treasures, they just lay uh, never being used. But they were given to us for, for the building of our family, for building up the family of God. That's what is the purpose, why God gave those gifts to us. With its own interpretation, verse 6, And Joseph came into them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. They were saddened by misunderstanding of their dreams. 
Even in a person's life, when he got the dream and it's been interpreted to him, it actually brings to him great satisfaction when dreams are interpreted. And he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of his Lord's house, again it says to us that they've been in custody, why do you look so sad today? Do you remember who said first, who asked this question first in the Bible? What has happened with Cain? What God told him? Why do you look so sad? Why, the literal meaning means, why is your face down? And if Cain would respond to God honestly, I am sure that God will bring proper solution to Cain, but Cain preferred to lie, to hide. Just a little bit more information about governmental places. Royal or governmental places are slippery places, nothing more uncertain than the favor of princes of rulers. Those that make God's favor their joy and his service their business will find him a better master than, Pharaoh's, than Pharaoh was. God has immediate access to the spirits of men which he can make serviceable to his own purposes whenever he pleases, quite beyond the intention of those concerned. To him all hearts are open, and anciently he spoke not only to his own people, but to others in dreams, like we see in the book of Job. Chapter 33, verse 15. They were troubled by what they did not understand and the importance of their dreams. As I just mentioned about the book of Job, chapter 33, verses 13 through 18, we have to remember that book of Job, one of the oldest book, is actually older than book of Genesis. Have you heard about that? Historians saying that book of Job, one of the oldest books. And what is interesting, why do you contend with him, asked one, someone in that book. And in reality, we do contend with the Lord. Do you agree with me? Or we have someone who is perfect, who never contends with the Lord. Even, you know, there are simple, very simple cases in our lives. Sometimes, have you noticed, sometimes you go to the store and you forgot what you really want to buy. Or you are, or you are uh, distracted by certain items in a store and you got those items and you turn yourself and then you hear inside of yourself very tiny voice who says, you forgot to buy. And you're saying, what? What did I forget to buy? In my case, no response. It just said to me, you forgot something. What I forgot. Or you're leaving the house <laughs> the same. I mean, you prepare it fully for your journey or for your travel, but somebody says to you, you forgot something. <laughs> and you're struggling. Instead of asking, what? can you please tell me in more details what I forgot? In reality, I do struggle. I didn't forget anything. And then time comes and I really understand that I really forgot to get something. And it, it comes again and again and again. Take a list with you. Take a list with you. Yeah, take a list with me, yes. But even when you... T <laughs> you actually can't forget your list. <laughs> Where every detail will be described. Verses 13 through 18. Why do you contend with him? For he does not give an accounting of any of his words. Which means, if he says to you something, we have to do it, or to me. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. You know what is interesting? Word perceive, actually, not the first word. First word is listening. Second word is hearing. And only third word is perceiving. Those who are able to listen, those who are able to hear, some people listen, but they do not hear. So when you are able to listen, when you are able to hear, then you will get ability to perceive. Verse 15, in a dream, how man can perceive in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men while slumbering on their bed. So God speaks to us in the dreams when our brain is very suppressed by the deep sleep. Our brain sometimes at war against God. So God comes to us when our brain is really, I wouldn't say dysfunction is not in function, but functioning is very suppressed, very limited. Then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. What does it mean to, for instruction to be sealed? 
we have a lot of instructions in the Bible, right? Some people believe that Jesus abolished those instructions. I think during the last days Jesus would explain to those stubborn ones that he never abolished any instructions because instructions were given for our good, for our bright, beautiful future. And God is able to seal that instruction in us that it would be never taken away. In order to turn man from his deeds, so instructions were given to us in order to turn us from our evil and wicked deeds and conceal pride from man. Another factor why God gave to us instructions. He gave instructions which, is, which are commandments and his advices in the Bible to conceal pride and to turn us toward the right way. He keeps back his soul. He keeps back our soul from the pit. Some people call it hell, or some people call it Sheol, but here we see a pit, bottomless pit, bottomless space. He wants to keep our souls away from that pit. And also he wants to keep our lives from perishing by the sword, or, or like we see today by the hurricanes, by tornadoes, by any tribulations in the nature. And I think God is getting angry and angry. You see that historically it's never been seen or recorded such terrible storms like, like we see now, and it's just bombarding the area where people, uh, one of my friends just moved to that area, to Florida. I don't think that it is I, I personally, I don't believe that it was a wise decision to move to Florida. <laughs> but it's, you know, everyone has his own view on that. So, word content means, why do you contend with the Lord? God asks, why do you contend with me? Content means to struggle in opposition. What God wants to say, why do you place yourself in opposition toward me if I would like to save your soul from the pit and your life from destruction or why do you compete with me sometimes we do compete with the Lord we do compete with his plans we think that our plans are better we know better situation that he does and it's not smart it's stupid and the last one to strive in debate or dispute dispute earnestly dispute earnestly actually God is so gracious he even gives to us opportunity to step into dispute with him he says Come to me, ask me most difficult questions, and let us discuss, let us reasoning, because he knows that we anyway will be in dispute with him. So he says, come and dispute with me, and I'll explain you why it is better my way than your way. Do not interpretations belong to God, said Joseph to those butler and baker, verses 8 through 15. And they said to him, we each have had a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God, which means they coming from him. Tell them to me, please. Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, behold, in my dream a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded, its blossoms shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was not in my hand, and I looked the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. Very interesting, he pressed fresh juice into Pharaoh's cup. Yeah, no refrigerator. <laughs> and Place the cup in Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. I already told you, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, about those two gifts. The three branches are three days. Now, within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your place. And you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. But remember me, when it is well with your soul, remember me. When it is well with you, and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. See how important words are. Remember me, then show kindness to me by remembering what I've done. That's how God sees it. 
make mention of me, which means verbally say about that, not just remember, but verbalize it. And by doing that, you will get me out of this house of slavery. When people are enslaved, it is very important to talk through it. Those who are addicted, they have to verbalize their addiction. They have to agree with that. Some people who are in the prison, they are not in agreement with that. They said, no, I am free. I am free. I am free indeed. We have to verbalize the problem. And then God will release us because he is kind and merciful and he remembers every day and every hour of our struggle. For indeed, I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. And also I have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon. As a human being, of course, Joseph was terribly, terribly wounded. But problem for that is that we look very narrow on our circumstances. In Joseph's case, he was suffering. He has been enslaved without doing anything wrong for other people to be born, to grow, and to become God's nation. Of course, Joseph didn't see that. So, but he was suffering as a human being. So sometimes we are suffering because God sees much more higher than we do, and he sees the results of our current sufferings. For example, when we do suffer, we get experience and understanding, and later we are able to help those who are suffering. We have to remember that. We shouldn't be with very narrow, my plans, my vision is a perfect vision. I understand completely all what is going on. No, that's not the truth. And, of course, Joseph interpreted beautiful, beautiful dream. And interpretation was very promising. And the other guy thought that if the first one got beautiful interpretation, beautiful result, then he will get beautiful result too. Also, how it speaks about those who are carriers of a word of wisdom or word of knowledge. We do not belong to ourselves. God gave to us this gift to serve Him. Sometimes what we bring to people can be very encouraging, but sometimes it can be very discouraging. We have to be very careful, but it doesn't mean that we should tell people only positive things. Because in some churches that there is a agenda. If you prophesy, you have to prophesy only positive and promising things. But who will challenge people? Who will point their attention to something what is wrong? You know, we have to be complete. We have to, we have to be wholesome in our messages. But when we bring message of judgment, we have to be responsible for bringing also message of hope. God never God never puts people down without lifting them up after, because he loves people. Like you, when you rebuke your child, you always should bring message of encouragement, or message of hope, or message of support. Joseph was their companion in tribulation. He was now a prisoner with them and had been a dreamer too. Communion and sufferings helps to work compassion toward those that do suffer. Joseph had interpreted to them, verses 16 through 23. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream, and there were three white baskets on my head. In the uppermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head, verse 18. So Joseph answered and said, this is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift off. In first case, lift up. He will lift off your head from you and hang you on a tree. And the birds will eat your flesh from you. Amazing that this negative from first glance. Interpretation speaks about something which will happen later with Jesus. Because Jesus will be also hung on a tree on our behalf. But his body never been given to the birds of the air. So he has been immediately taken away from the tree and put in a tomb. We remember that, right? Now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday on the third day, that he made a feast. What kind of feast it is when he beheaded Baker? 
And please note, he beheaded Baker, who said that I am the bread of life, bread of life, Jesus, right? So he has been crucified as a bread of life. And we see here punishment for the baker who is connected with the bread. And he made a feast for all his servants and he lifted up the head of the chief butler, but on the chief baker and of the chief baker among his servants. Then he restored the chief butler to his butlership again. And he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand, but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. You know what came to me right now? They all were in prison. While they all were in prison, they all were alive. They were deeply down in dungeon, almost on the bottom of a pit, but they were alive. God gives to us, or He allows sometimes to us, to be in a deep bottom of a pit in order to preserve our lives from destruction. I would say it again. It is better to be imprisoned than to be killed. It is better to be addicted than to be dead. Do you agree with me? God allows certain people to be addicted because he doesn't want for them to be dead. Or he allows them to be addicted in order to preserve their souls from the pit, from shoal, from hell. Please understand me correctly. I'm not propagate here addiction. <laughs> what I'm saying that all those three guys, all those three guys, they were deeply down in a dungeon, in a prison, one of the most terrible prisons, but all three were alive. When they all three, in this case two, have been lifted up, which means taking from the pit, from the bottom, on the surface, one lost his life. So it is better for this one to be on the bottom of a pit than to be dead when he was taken. Do you agree with me? Or maybe not. Some people prefer to be dead, to be dead on the surface than to be alive on the bottom. Who knows? You know, everyone has his own. Yeah. Therefore, hypocrites, when they hear good things promised to faithful followers of the way would put in for a share, though they have no part nor lot in the matter. And as we see here, Chief Butler did not remember Joseph, so he has not been kind to Joseph. He was not helpful to Joseph. People with a short memory. It is hard to rely on people with a short memory. God expects that we would be thankful to Him all our lives for His faithfulness. Amen? Drink ye all of it. Imagine Joseph standing between a baker of bread and butler of wine. Some 2,000 years later we find a greater than Joseph with the same two elements, bread and wine. It was during the last supper, Passover supper, that we read. As they were eating, Jesus took bread blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples. Please note, first, when he took bread, he blessed it. If something which is not blessed is broken, there is no any point, there is no any gain. It should be blessed. Those who are blessed, when they are broken, they bring blessings to other people. Like in Joseph's case, because Joseph, he has been blessed before and then broken, and then brought blessings to other people. So God, before God breaks us, He blesses us. For those of you who expect from God only blessings, bad news is that blessings are never alone. Blessings always accompany with a broken effect. You know why? Because God wants to use us. If we always... When you last time prayed that God will break you? Do we have crazy people here? <laughs> you know, Tanya, Tanya prayed today with very dangerous prayer. I don't know about you. Inside of me there was a shake when she said, God, please continue humble us. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what does it mean? <laughs> if someone, when you last time prayed to God that he should humble you? 
or keep you in a humble state of mind and heart and soul. <laughs> it's very dangerous prayers. I'm telling you, you know why? Because God definitely would respond on those prayers. Definitely, 100%. Please do not be discouraged. Blessings are always accompanied by pain, by suffering, by those tough lessons. Because God wants for us to be helpful to Him. He wants for us to be used by Him. Some 2,000 years later, we find a greater than Joseph with the same two elements. Sorry, I read that. It was during the Last Supper, Passover Supper that we read. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, take, take. So God says to us today, Take, eat what was given to you. Take and eat. Take and do not place into your pocket. Do not place into your pocket His word. Do not place his word under your pillow. Some people think that if they will put Bible under their pillow, they will become smart and spiritual. Absolutely no. They would be shallow and empty as before. We have to eat word of God. We have to partake the bread of life. That's exactly what Jesus said. Eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them and saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood. You know that some people today, they accuse Christians that Christians are pagans who drink the blood of their Lord. In some sense, they are right. If we really love the Lord, we have to be partakers of his cup. And what kind of cup it is? Again, what kind of cup it is? It is a cup of sufferings. Jesus raised this cup before coming into the place of crucifixion. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. See, there is no remissions, remission of sins without sufferings. There is no remission of sins without sacrifice. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the wine until the day when I drink it new with you. Where? In my Father's kingdom. Matthew 26, 26 through 29. And the butlers and the bakers dreamed they were at three days away. The baker of bread was slain while the one carrying wine was not. The slain body of the baker was hung on a tree. The first person in the Bible described in this way. In Jesus' case, he remained three days in the tomb. His flesh was hung on the tree while the blood of the new covenant survives and provides for his late work in his father's kingdom when the new covenant goes into effect. When the new covenant goes into effect. Jesus invites every one of us today to be partakers of this cup and to eat his body. But time will come when new covenant will be in effect at his father's kingdom. I do not touch any theological issues here. Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Just for your information. Who remembers where New Testament is described? You should know that. We've talked about that many times. No, much more early, much more earlier. Several thousand years earlier. At least. First time. I said, where? where? Jeremiah. Do you remember? Prophet Jeremiah 31. Thank you. Jeremiah 31 is a place where New Testament is described. It's detailed description. We have to remember that very clearly. As recipients of our Father's kingdom, we have to, to keep that. We have to remember that, first of all. To whom it has been addressed. There are two houses who are recipients of this New Testament or New Covenant. We have to be members of one of those two. Otherwise, we will miss the point. May God bless you. Please be thankful that God granted to you remission of sins. Not only to you, to me and to you. He granted remission of sins because of his own blood. And it is very, very precious. It is very, very expensive. Blood today is still expensive, right? Very expensive. 
But his blood is actually priceless. There is no price for his blood. So please refresh your memory. Refresh your memory every time. It will help you not only survive, but strive and to flourish. And because those who are thankful, they are strong. Thankful people, they are most strong people. It's very hard to discourage those who are thankful, those whose memory is fresh. God is so brilliant, so amazing. Can you please let each one of us say one beautiful word about God? Yeah. One beautiful, faithful. You can be loud. Faithful. Love. Loud. Loud? Love. 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 Mercy. Mercy. He's caring. Caring, absolutely. Patient. Patient. Amazing. Trustful. Trustful. Honest. Lord is all in all. A man, all in all. Long suffering. Long suffering, yeah. Forgiving. Forgiving. Excellent. Grace. Grace. Graceful. Almighty. Almighty. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom, which means peace, well being, right? Completeness. Omnipotent, yes, absolutely. Omnipresent, too. Amen. Some people think that they can leave God. <laughs> can we be alone without God? No, He's everywhere, right? Or say, I, I left God in such and such year. Yes, maybe you left Him, but He never left you. It's like, you know, God is here, I turn my back, I am alone. I am alone, Lord, I am alone. And He's behind of me. I should turn my face. Yeah, some people act like God doesn't exist. Right? Actually, sometimes I do act like God doesn't exist. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When we are scared, you know what I notice? Actually, God is so amazing. He granted fear. Do you know that here in BC, a wild cat, how you call this? Cougar. 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 You know that cougar has fear of a dog, especially when dog is barking. Or maybe it's too annoying for cougar. He can kill this dog just by one move. <laughs> Please do not stop. Donna, what, what quality of God you can mention right now? What beautiful quality of God you can mention right now about? First. Uh, I don't know. I thank God for all the work he's done in my life. See? You remember his works. Oh, yes. Yes, See? definitely. Good, good. Everlasting. Everlasting. I, I just want to help you to be directed toward unforgiveness or frustration. I'm sure there is places in us, places of frustration. Sometimes we, we would like to give God an agenda. You know, we want him right now. And exactly as we want. But he comes from the different ways. He, he comes differently. He responds differently. And because he doesn't respond to us as we wish. We, we get frustrated, you know. And we, we sometimes even offended on him, you know. It is not terribly wrong to be offended on him. Terribly wrong when we hide it. If there is a zone in you when you've been offended by different uh, responses from God's side. Please release it from you. Please release you. Sometimes maybe he hold you in a tight, difficult uh, situation because he wanted to prevent you from complete destruction. Do you remember? Like those guys, they were on the bottom of a pit, but they were alive. When they were taken from prison, one has been killed. Father, I just pray that you will give to us, grant to us wisdom to understand that your plans much above our plans. And what you see, we, we do not see even part of what you can see. Please help us to, to be trustful and to be open for your guide. And I pray for those who have been offended by differences of your responses or by different ways of your communication. Please help us to be released from any bitterness, any barriers or obstacles 
of tight connection with your spirit. Father, please restore first love, restore first trust, childish trust, childish trust. We would never be grown enough to be in debate with you, but we are your children and you want to deal with us as your children, beloved children. Please help us to come back and restore the beginning, fresh love with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.